You know my love for gadgets and wearables. I've been tracking every possible health metric with some sort of digital health device that has become available over the years to be able to tell you how those work, which ones are useful or reliable. But up until now, I've never tried something that measures blood glucose, even though flash monitoring has become sort of a new norm for many patients who live with type 1 diabetes. So let's give it a shot. This is Dr. Bartolomeshko, and you're watching a future bit from the Medical Futurist. A recent study has shown that for people with diabetes, switching from the well-known finger prick testing to flash blood glucose monitoring, which basically means having a sensor on your upper arm, can be a game changer. The research shows that the technology helps improve blood glucose levels in people living with diabetes and can greatly improve their quality of life. It's an easy, cost-effective and safe method of being in charge of a health issue that can otherwise challenge people's lives. I browsed through all of the technologies available for flash glucose monitoring and I chose the most exciting one to test it. That's the Freestyle Lib 2 program. As it arrived, I realized they only sent a sensor and not a reader, as our smartphones are more than smart enough by today to work with the data coming from the sensor, so there is no need for additional technology. Brilliant move already. Unfortunately, for regulatory purposes, the app is not available in my country, Hungary. And even though I know the company's heads, they couldn't help me overcome this problem. Of course, the diabetic community is one of the most clever creative groups, as they had to circumnavigate a regulatory nightmare for a decade, so I received a few tips and tricks on how to hack the system. But it's sort of insane that you have to become an IT guru or a hacker just to have access to a life-saving technology like this. I mean, here is a breakthrough consumer technology and just look at the walkthrough of what you have to do to be able to benefit from it in your disease management. So at the end of the day, the local diabetes community helped me out. And for this test, I'm going to use an older sensor that doesn't hit any regulatory walls. My expectation is that I'm going to learn more about how my blood glucose reacts to the foods I love and to certain dietary changes and how much my mood, focus and physical exercise affects it. Even though a glucose sensor could sound boring to someone without diabetes, these types of statistics are actually super exciting and could potentially be highly influential to my lifestyle and my preventive plan. So, here we go. Later. After two weeks, I can tell you now, I had some mild discomfort, maybe a little bit of pain on the very first day, but since then, I think I've forgotten all about it. I could sleep on my left side, I could have a shower while wearing it, and even I had exercises and, and went out for many running sessions. It has been absolutely okay. Whenever I wanted to, I could just click on this button, put the reader next to the sensor, and that's it. My, here is my blood glucose level. It has been quite a simple experience. But now the two weeks have passed and the reader told me that I have like three hours to remove the sensor. I watched some YouTube videos about it and now you'll put some cream around it and we try to peel it off as slowly as possible to avoid any discomfort or pain. And then I will be able to download my data from the reader by connecting this reader with a USB cable to my PC. Too easy. <laughs> it came off finally. Yeah, there was no pain, no discomfort. It's fine. Um, but this is something. Okay, good to know. And now it's time to get my data. After removing the sensor, I could download my data in like two minutes. I got it in two forms. One, an Excel spreadsheet with every single measurement in it, and also in the form of a 
PDF report, a summary. I shared that with my primary care professional so we could discuss the details. Of course, I know that there is no reason for a healthy individual to do wireless blood glucose testing. But from time to time, I think I will redo this experiment to learn more about how to adjust my lifestyle habits, how to adjust my diet, especially based on my blood glucose measurements and the, the waves. I have meals five times a day. It's quite a strict diet, but I, I feel happy uh, by doing that. And I've been doing that for many years. And the best days when I could maybe function the best cognitively and also emotionally were the days when I had five waves on my blood glucose measurement uh, graph. Five meals, five waves going up and then getting back to normal as quickly as possible. And I know that there is no reason for that. However, I got the same comments from many of my followers 10, 15 years ago, when for the first time I started doing fitness tracking or uh, tracking running exercises or even tracking sleep, I got the comment, why would you do that? Now I received similar ones. But yet, this is how the whole digital health revolution, the wearable health community, and in essence, I think the patient empowerment movement has been taking shape. We gradually learn how to do this properly along the way. I don't encourage anyone to do wireless blood glucose testing, but if you want to adjust your diet, it makes sense to reach out to an advanced technology that's accessible on the market globally. And looking at my data, my primary care professional first asked about the time in ranges. She told me that it should be around 100% because I'm not diabetic. And indeed, on the report, you can see that it's 100%. Uh, Besides time in ranges, my primary care professional wanted to look at my daily glucose profiles, showing all the waves of how my blood glucose levels changed along the way uh, during the day after every meal. And as there was nothing extraordinary in the data, I didn't even have any low glucose events. She told me that I should keep on doing the diet that um, I have been having for many years. But there were days when we saw in the data what I felt along the day, like I'm not saying I cheated on my diet, but I made mistakes. Like I, I worked so much, I forgot about uh, a meal and I skipped it. Or I ate foods containing processed sugar. That doesn't do me any good. In those days, I felt like I couldn't focus cognitively as much as I normally can. And we saw the explanation in the data based on how I felt during those days. In essence, I'm very happy for the community of diabetes patients because that's definitely much better experience than finger pricking or any other types of methods for measuring blood glucose levels. It has been uh, without any discomfort, without any pain, without any hassle, basically. And I could just check my blood glucose levels whenever I wanted. That's all for now. You will see even more details about this review on the in the article we write for medicalfuturist.com. And I cannot wait to start a new experiment with some new digital health gadget. See you next time. If you like this video, please subscribe below to get notified about every single new video we come up with. And also please go to medicalfuturist.thinkific.com where you will find our two courses, the digital health course and our newest one, Introduction to Artificial Intelligence in Medicine and Healthcare. See you there.